Hi, Michael Fox again. Today I am visiting the pollinator link garden of Greg Tasney. Greg's garden is not only an amazing wildlife habitat, it is also a thriving bush care nursery. Greg has propagated over 1,000 local plants for the Rocky Waterholes bush care site. So I think I got this from Patton Park years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I don't know how to say that properly, but uh, it's a pretty good pollinator plant, but you can pull bits of it and stick it around your garden and it grows quite readily as long as you've got some moisture. Mm-hmm. And you've got some kangaroo vine in pots here. Yes. Ready well, to go in. You, well, this is all my propagation, so I'll show oh, you the, So you've been... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I've propagated 1,100 plants for our site. Oh, well so, done. As you can see, there's more in the Richmond Birdwing vines for the project. Okay, and this one here is? Uh, that's another native. I don't know what it's called. I've seen it in the um, uh, the M2M book. Yeah. And I've found it a couple of times, but it's one of those ones with just a scientific name, I think. Okay. Yet yeah, another one I got from Patton Park. So I'm, but well, I'm not curious sure. Curious leaf. Curious. So. Yeah. Andrew Wallace actually came once and stopped and looked at this when he came over to talk to me about this but you know the the only there's only two we've been here since 2007 the only two trees that have were here when we got here none of this was here was this cesium and that pop that palm but this this has grown remarkably since we've gotten here because you know I'm always watering yeah see. yeah so this is a cesium lumenii so it's a, like a 7-eleven for your possums, your fruit bats, <laughs> yep. and fig birds are yep. always coming in here too. So it's very, it's a very popular tree. So, but here we go. Here's the old Richmond birdwing vine, uh -huh. which has been here close to 10 years now. It's gone to the top of this 30 meter tall cesium <laughs> because you're supposed to plant, this is the perfect tree to plant Richmond birdwing vines next to are the cesiums. That's what the um, land care groups say to plant them next to. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that back in the day, mm. but it just so happened that yes. <laughs> I jagged that. So it's gone way up into the canopy and it's actually produced fruit, which as you can see down below, yep. is the result of the seedlings that I've um, started to grow for the Richmond birdwing project, just from my two, I've got oh, three you see, vines. Got one over there as well. And one in the corner. I bought that years ago. Um, so it's a climbing maidenhair. Ma maidenhair fern, yeah, that's right. Um, it's just, it's going great. It loves the shade and only really ever gets to this height. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful plant. The thing over here was when we moved in, I had a lot of smaller stuff in that wasn't doing so well, but um, my wife got a bit upset with the development here. So she asked me to plant some trees here to quickly shield neighbours so I thought water houses were perfect. These have probably been here for four to five years. Okay, and they're um, doing well. And I worked out that this has turned into a bit of a carpet python highway <laughs> because they move along here then go onto our roof yep. and go into the vines that have grown over there. <laughs> uh, we found a 2.6 metre carpet python in here. Um, we've got a Back house is Citrador in there too. Lemon set of myrtle, that's in yeah. the corner. But you can see the flowers right at the top. It's actually flowering, I didn't know that. That's um, got that beautiful smell. Of, um, it's a bush tucker too, isn't it? You can use it to yeah. flavour your foods. And you've got your Banksy Rover here. This is as old as they come. This is 10 years old too. Um, just trying to reach out from underneath the water houses, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And a lot of butterflies. Yeah, they love it here because there's still a lot of sun. Yeah. Um, and you got they've got places to rest up here. And you know what water houses are like when they're in flower. It was just a couple of months ago. It was just bees were in here. There were beetles. You know how beetles get right on the yeah, flower. And yeah, yeah. There's ants eating the the, pole, the nectar as well. So, but um, more importantly, is a, a sweet marinda in here that's been growing since. Oh, um, geez, it's been there five years. Marinda jasminoides is the old scientific name for it. There's a new one now, apparently. Mm -hmm. But they're hard enough to learn as it is. Um, I don't know what this was. Another Patton Park one? 
Yeah. But I've forgotten what it is. Yeah, I can't think of it. <laughs> but it does look familiar. Yeah. A bit of corn. Yeah, and what I've done here, um, as you can see, I'll show you, see how it's really messy in here? Yeah, yeah. So what I do, I clip down um, branches and I throw them straight into the, um, the garden. We've actually got um, a lot of blue tongue skinks that actually come through. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's probably about five or six eastern water skinks that live in here. And one actually comes and begs for food, you know, <laughs> yeah. every, every time we come out for lunch. Yeah. Um, it comes, lives in there, it comes out and begs for food. This is a Banksy spinulosa. Yep. One of the Banksy spinulosas. Kind of just, just hanging on. I think they can do with a bit of a prune sometimes. I think so too, but I, I don't think it's... I think that's the way they are in the wild, right? Mm. They're, they're, hmm. they're leggy, they're a bit ugly. Oh, yeah. yeah. A bit ugly. You just hope you get some flowers on them. And this is my, my spider collection. Here's one. <laughs> uh, this this one's just disappeared into her... What was it? Oh, the leaf yeah, it's those. A, probably yeah, they're great, aren't they? Garden orb weaver, is it? No, I don't know what they're called. They're a different um, species, that, but they're leaf... They pull no, up the leaf. Yep, and hide yeah. away in it. Yeah, and you know, here's the golden orb up there. And we get a whole collection of them along here. It must be a good, not only is it a snake highway, but it's a spider highway along here. See, they're all along the back here. And I know um, once every six months we get a pheasant kukul. Mm -hmm. come in um, just from down the creek and it cleans up the whole lot of them. I was going to say, I thought the birds might be keen on that. Yeah, well they usually survive. It's the pheasant cuckoo who comes along once every six months, cleans the whole yard out. <laughs> they, we love love seeing that bird. Oh yeah. This ripen. Yep. And I shake them down onto this bare, yeah, bare here, ground. And I just get lamandras pop up like this. Ah. And what I do is I just pick them out and put them into, um, into pots. Yeah, and they go down the creek. So this is produced. This patch here from this couple of plants has produced over a thousand lamandra in the last year. In the last year, a thousand. Yeah, so it's just unbelievable plant. This is, but they must love it there. It's a very uh, live wire sort of garden. Yeah, well, here's the lamandras, mate. Yeah. So Rachel's coming over. I'm going to give her a tray of. Um, these Lamanda hystrix they are, so yeah. There's a I was standing out here and I heard all this alarm from the local birds and I look over and here's a common tree snake coming across the road. <laughs> and it went from in here and went straight into these this Zizium, this just yeah. a Zizium um Australia. Yep, yep. But um yeah straight into there and lots of hidey holes, so that's that's the main point there. So it was happy. Yeah, it's, it was very happy to climb in there. I did did have like a gravilli back in the day when you you know you were all about yeah back in the 70s and 80s that's right plant yeah. native and now I'm we plant gravillias it's dying it's dying so i've actually planted a native mulberry yeah until summer's over i'll leave that up for shade yeah so the native mulberry can yep once, get established yeah once it gets cooler i'll chop the gravillia down it's on the way out anyway so so uh, this is your neighbour's veggie garden? Yeah, that's Wendy. That's um, I thought I'd follow her because she does a lot of this natural yeah. thing with sticks yeah. and stuff. Yeah. As long as I don't get in trouble by council with it. But um, my wife's a bit horrified by the, the look of it. Hopefully she'll let me keep it. But each stake is a native grass. So hopefully what I'm going to have here is, um, I'm going to plant a lot more, is have a um, refuge for those skinks and snakes. Yeah. Yeah. So straight across the road into here. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's the plan. It's a pretty good plan. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's Lamandra. Can you imagine what it's going to look like? With it's going to be, mm. you know, mm. out here. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know. So, do you want this? That's what it was. So I don't have to mow it then either, do I? Oh, that's right. So. That's right. In your bush care nursery. If you have been inspired by Greg's garden, please visit www.pollinatorlink.org to register your garden and help us reach our 2018 target of 1,000 registered pollinator link gardens. The Pollinator Link Project is a non-profit social enterprise sponsored by the B4C Environment Fund and supported by Brisbane City Council. The objective is to create a city-wide mosaic habitat of 
for birds, butterflies and bees by providing water, food and shelter in backyards, balcony gardens, schoolyards and parks. Hashtag water, food, shelter. Please register today and join the Pollinator Link community bringing wildlife back to city gardens.